into segment two on sin, fear, guilt, and shame. Now, if you're tuned in on the second one, it's saying, hey, look, you're saying something that's relevant to me. Keep going. And I'm glad. I'm glad because eventually you would have kept going anyway because God knows how to heal all of his children. But we've kept going. And we ended up in the first segment on saying that the reason we've got this stuff is because Adam and Eve ourselves don't have to even look back then ourselves have put God into a secondary place not primary you don't see God in front of you every moment you're not dancing at Jake are you going through world the world today every moment if God was primary and is the essence of what you are and the joy of being with him do you sing to God all day long oh dear my God my sweet my love Oh dear my God, my love, oh dear my God, my love, my love, I love thee, yes I do. Do you go all day singing along to God? Want another chorus of it? No thank you. But at any rate, you catch the gist of what I'm saying. That's the golden core. My Lord, my love, my sweet, my love, my Lord, my love, my sweet, my Lord, my love, I love thee so. My Lord, my love, my sweet. You be doing it all day long. Well, we're not. Hey, you see that guy over there who's singing this stuff all day long? Call a paddy wagon or call a guy with the white coat. Better get him out of here. He's nuts. That's the world that says if you think primarily of God and you're living your life to let God bring you to it, the world says you're a nut. There's something wrong with you. Hey, come on, man. Stop that. Hey, let's get back in here. We've got to make some money. Do this, do that, etc. We are in a creation in which God has become secondary. And we have replaced him with what our thoughts are. And the reason that the sin and the guilt and the fear and the shame have come about because we're not comfortable with it. We don't know the real God, but we're not comfortable with it. And we're afraid, just as Adam and Eve, when God came into the garden after the so-called snake um, tempted them to eat the apple, and God comes into the garden, what's the first thing they do? They hide. They have lost. They, by walking outside of the primary portion of their mind in which God was present, they now have no idea of the quality of God. They're thinking with another mind because they wanted to be the big shot. They're now in a mind which is entirely unaware of what God truly is because they're not thinking with that mind anymore. They wanted to supersede God. They wanted to be the primary and make God the second. So they have no idea of the qualities of God and they hide. Now, if that didn't happen, they would have said to God, God, I've got to tell you something. I've got to tell you what I fantasize. I made myself a human being and we did this and that and we built skyscrapers and all kinds of things. And I want to tell you, wow. And God would have said, wow. Indeed, isn't that interesting? Because God knows that he gave us free will. And that we can have any kind of fantasy that we want because the fantasies don't change the golden core. We just chose to think of something that was different. And by going to God, we would have stayed in the same place where we always were, but we were afraid because we lost track of the qualities of God, lovingness, patience, knowing we were going to have our own fantasies, knowing we were going to imagine things, knowing we would like to kind of think of, wouldn't it be nice if I was an original creator? You can't remember it, but we did it. We have now created and are taking part in a creation which is separate and apart from God and have made God a secondary aspect 
or even tertiary, if we even let him into it, in our lives. That's why fear came up, because we lost the awareness of God's love of us, and that he would have given us permission to have whatever fantasy we, we wanted, bring it back to him, and he would have said, how'd you like it? Nah, it's not as good as this life here. Yeah, well, anyway, hey, have fun. Think whatever you want, because you don't harm anything. You can't touch the golden core. We have to learn that. That's what we're learning in this existence, to get back to this God. So, we ready again? We're going on in number verse number 149, which is in the foot ladder of notes divine. You'll find it on the website, Christian Laity, L-A-I-T-Y, foundation.org. Next line, now God has asked you questions. Why would you hold on to all this stuff? Why not abandon these heartless fruits that are just causing you to suffer? And he now goes on. Relinquish, hold, on call, the call. Relinquish, hold, on call, that speaks of guilt and sin. Relinquish, let it go. God's instruction, God is saying to you, let it go. Relinquish your hold on it. And he now asks you a question again. Would the hold on to something that mortifies and shames thy soul? Would you do this? Now, are you going to let it drift past? Or are you going to stop? Stop the YouTube. Hold it up. Just pause for a moment, just like you had the question before in the first segment, asking you, why would you hold on to this? Why wouldn't you ab abandon it? And we said, we have to learn how to be able to get these questions to God. Here are the questions again, different ones. Would you hold on to something that mortifies and shames thy soul? Would you do that? Do you want to keep going through life feeling mortified and shamed? Would you want that? Is this the life that you enjoy when I'm guaranteeing to you something that's entirely different and all you have to do is be willing to let me show it to you? What's your choice? What's your choice? You want me to go further or are you saying yes? Look, I don't want to be mortified. I don't want to be shameful. Yes, I want to move on. Very good. Need not to do so. You can stop mortifying and shaming your soul. You need not to do so. By the way, here's a good place to learn the lesson. God has here need not to do so. In the instructions to the foot ladder, you are taught that the word you never appears as the first word in a sentence. God is following a Greek paradigm in which in ancient Greek they never used you as the personal subject in a sentence and must for stress. You there, the you came. Otherwise the you is not there and it's not here. You need not to do so. You don't have to hold on to something. If you don't put the you there, it looks as though God's saying, no, you don't have to drop that stuff. But he's saying it differently. You need not to do so, to hold on to that stuff. You need not do so, for thy core is golden. You can let it go because of this golden core. Yeah, but I don't feel that golden cord yet, Bob. And you're saying this stuff, God's going to take care of it. I told you, we've got to go through it line by line. God goes forward. No ill repute resides there. Your core is golden. No ill repute. Nothing of ill repute resides there. It doesn't exist. It's all made up how I made you. No ill repute lies there. It's pure. No matter what you thought, your soul is pure. You can't change it. Why? Because I made your soul. And if you think you can unmake it, that's the Lulu Bell thought because you're not greater than me and you can't unmake what I made you of. I told you, you got free will, think what you want, have your fantasies, go wherever you want, have fun. But you cannot unmake you, because I made you to love and enjoy what I have, and I gave it away 
That's who I am, a loving God, who just creates beings to go ahead and enjoy this so that I could share the magnificence of what is in me. No ill repute resides there. Think not. Stop thinking in that area. God, I don't know how to do that. I know you don't know how to do it. That's coming. Think not. Live not there. Don't live there. Don't create this kind of a life in which you're living. Next sentence. Where hearts abandoned cry out for freedom. This is what's going on. This golden core is crying out for freedom. Please, let me free. Let me free. Don't think there. Don't live there. Let me free. And now listen to God's softness here. Ah, oh, my loves, live not there, but with me, who loves, who waves the hands of fruit, but with me who loves and who waves hands of fruit, not these fruitless things, <coughs> but hands of fruit, that's all you get from my hands, is the fruit of a living and a live world. The issue is, you have to go to him. Next again, he asks the question, why wouldst not thee see this? Why delay but a moment more? He's questioning it, because we're going to go forward on this stuff again. Why would you not see this? And why would you delay but a moment more. You're going to delay? Are you convinced enough? Are you going to risk it to go to God? Because in the next segment, we're going to show God's prayer to you of how He wants to go with you. But are you ready for it? Are you worried that even this isn't reassuring, that you think God could be down on you? You're going to have to start there in your prayer life. You've got to ask God as to whether or not he needs to straighten out your ideas about who he is, because you've lost track. So you can give your fears to God if you wish, if that's the start. But are you ready to be able to do this? You want to hold on to this? You want to go on to the third segment of this? I hope you do. And if you've got questions, remember, you're on YouTube. You can write these things down, and they'll get to us. Or you can email us. We can get a hold of it. And we'll try, we'll ask God to help us to be able to help you. So, we're going to pull it down at this point. Gives you a chance to go ahead and think about what we're talking about. God wants you to be able to let him do his job with you. And oh, can he do a job with you. You take care as you prepare for segment three. <music>